that was in 2015 when I dropped out of college. Yeah, and around uh, 20 after working for the company that I was working for for two years, I started a money lending business while I was still in employment. In employment. Yeah. I was giving out my friends some monies. I would get my salary. I, I give out my friends. They paid me back with some interest. Then I, I, I reached a point where I felt like I wanted to grow the, 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 the business. And I, I quit work around that time to focus on the money lending business. And at the same time, I was uh, involved with a friend of mine, Innocent Siame, who, who was doing pretty, pretty well in the steel business. Me, myself, I was lending out money, but then the nature of the money lending business wasn't uh, uh, so aligned with uh, the person that I am because I, I didn't really feel like I was genuinely helping people. When, when, when I give, uh, for us around that time, a good customer would be somebody that has a problem and uh, they really need money and have good collateral. Then we get the collateral and most of the time it was a debt trap and people would fail to pay back. So I decided to try to transfer the, the money into other businesses. I tried out the Salaola business, it failed. I tried out um, uh, some, some, some importing fish from different provinces, it also failed. And on, on top of that, my salary, my, my capital had only reached uh, around 25,000. That was in 2017, around 25,000. So stopping the money lending business and channeling the monies, in, monies into other businesses of which I was making loss, losses, uh, it was uh, killing my capital. Then it reached a point where I only remained with the 10,000. But luckily enough, the friend that I was with was teaching me about steel. About steel and how important it was. He exposed me to the construction business. He, he, he got me... Uh, he gave me some knowledge on how to calculate, on how to weld, on on how to make window frames, and from there, that's when I I, I decided to to start uh, a a metal fabrication workshop. That was around 2018. But then it was quite hard because I never had any place to operate from, and the only customers that I would get around that time, I I, I would work from their sites. Um, and the only uh, capital that we had around that time, because it was quite hard, that was our start, was a grinder, a welding machine, and a compressor. That was only around 9,000 kwacha. Then we did one project for a certain client uh, in Chalala area. He paid us. Then when, when I received the profit, it was around 10,000 kwacha. I decided to find a place. This place, it was actually a dump site. I was just passing, then I, I saw a dump site. Then I decided to contact, uh, to ask around who's the owner of this place. Then they introduced me to a certain man. Uh, then that man said he was the owner of this place, and I, I paid him three months in advance. Then um, from there, we built like a small shelter. Uh, we set up our machines, only three machines around that time just here. We cleaned the place up and we remained with nothing. Then before we started operating, we we were approached by the council people because it's actually a commercial area and they, they don't allow you to operate if you don't have the trader's license. And it was around the time when we had depleted all our resources in trying to set up. So, the council people approached us and told us we can't operate till we register and we have the certain papers in place. Then that was one of the most difficult times of, of, of my life, I would say, because then I had totally nothing. And uh, what happened was for, for, for me to register with the council and everything, I, I went and uh, approached one of my former colleagues in the money lending business who helped me with the sum of the 3,000 kwacha for me to run the paperwork uh, errands. And from there, when, when I was there, I was driving a, a, a Toyota Corolla because I we needed a car because our line of business, uh, our clients are in places that uh, 
that 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 are hard to 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 to, to move if you don't have a, 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 you don't have mobility. So we had a, a very small vehicle. Then on on my way from borrowing some money from my friend, I got involved in an accident, and uh, the car that I was using, my car had died. So I went to leave my car and borrowed somebody's car. Then on the same day, I got involved in an accident with money that I had just got from a money lender. Then all that money was just wasted on sports <laughs> because uh, I had to clear out the mess that I had created. I had to, to repair the car that I had damaged. Then I would say that was the lowest point of my life because one, uh, we had depleted all the capital that we had to start up with the road in Metro. And uh, secondly, I, had, I was in debt. And thirdly, we, we wouldn't operate because we were back to the same point. Then I decided to go back home. By then I was staying in Matera. I decided to go back to my place. I sold everything that I had in the house. I just, just, just to do the same council errands. Then I had nowhere to stay. I started staying in my car, <laughs> just here at the workshop. I would just park my car behind there, and that's where I was sleeping for some good uh, two months. Yeah, I was staying just there. But still, we kept going, we kept going, and uh, we kept pushing, we kept believing with my, with my guys that one day would have some better days. And till now, we've, we've, I would say, gracefully, we've managed to grow the company and uh, reach more places and we've managed to grow our capacity. Yeah. Yours is an interesting journey, Dali. So, so from failing school, you rush into business, do a number of business, Salaola, money rendering, fish business, and now the steel, uh, the steel uh, business. Yeah. What, what is it that has been pushing you all through and through despite all this uh, laws that you mentioned in your journey. Okay, um, what really kept my mind uh, focused on 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 on, on uh, business and for me, I'll say it wasn't even the easy way out because at some point when I was working, I sent my back my myself back to school. I went back to write my second year and. I cleared my second year, then I was given a chance to write my third year, but then I felt like that wasn't something that I really wanted to do. I just wanted to do business. So I, from there, that's when I say I, I made up my mind to say, no, okay, what I'm going to do is business. Well, I made up my mind to say, whether it fails, I'll live by it, but this is what I wanted to do, because I wanted to empower other youths. I, I wanted to, to work on the Zambian system of, of how business is done. I feel like I've got a lot of ideas to improve uh, the business sector and the Zambian entrepreneurial ecosystem. Yeah, I'd say that. Okay, so the decision you made was quite great. Dumping school and going to business fully. Yeah. What really is there? <laughs> what really is there that made you like, oh, okay, I can't go to school anymore. And then we're living in a world where they say, Education is the key to everything, and then you take this different route altogether. Yeah, how's it been? Okay, um, you, you know, who you hang around is very important. When I was at the lowest point of my life, I felt like that was uh, the most important stage because I interacted with people that were really good at what they did. I have friends that have degrees, I have friends that have uh, 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 diplomas that are working uh, formal jobs and I, 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 I see what drives them to do what they are doing, not that I'm being a critic, but then when, when, when I interacted with people on the ground, people that were doing hands-on uh, uh, works, I discovered that there is a lot of talent out there and there are a lot of youths out there that are that, that, that have talent at their disposal, but they just don't know how to channel it properly. And interacting with a lot of clients in my field, I discovered there are a lot of people, actually, who are in need of very good services. So I was looking at it in a two-way form. There are people that need the service, and there are people that 
have the skill and the expertise. But connecting the two is quite hard because uh, you know the reputation that's in the Zambian construction industry. There is, there is an old saying, when you pay a declare a full payment, you build the house yourself. <laughs> yeah. So I, I saw a problem that I felt like if I can jump on it, I can manage it, maybe I might sort out uh, a problem that's in the industry. And that's what kept me to say, this is where I'm supposed to be. Okay, so two years down the line, two now, three, almost three years, uh, you yes. started this steel business in um, 2018. Yes. How has it been? How many employees do you have? How are the tenders coming in? How are customers flying in and everything? Okay, um, so far we have 17 employees. Yes, uh, we have a mobile team. Uh, we've worked with uh, clients from the Copper Belt. We've done, I think, um, 10 houses in Kitwe, 3 houses in Dola, and we've done about 5 with Sesheke and, uh, yeah, and the house in Choma. Yeah, I would say the clientele is uh, pretty good because we've, we, our, 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 our focus is on delivering a good service and seeing, seeing to it that the client is really satisfied. Yes. So from uh, the, the, the time that we started, we have uh, we only started with uh, five guys, including me. Yeah, we started with five guys, including me. But down the line, after doing some good advertisement and some clients uh, doing some good recommendations, I would say we have quite good business on ground. Okay. Yes, that's very good. Going back to the issue you mentioned of Zambian contractors not being trusted uh, and the like, what is really your call to the local businesses? Because throughout the show, uh, most uh, entrepreneurs that are in fields like yours and other fields have gotten to complain that they're not really getting the support from the local clients. Mm -hmm. So how can we work around winning back the trust in local products, local services, and the like? Okay, um, <clears throat> so I mentioned Zambian, uh, Zambian uh, constructors having difficulties in delivering a, a proper service. Uh, that's true, I interact with a lot of clients that educate me a lot about how they expect uh, business to, to go and how it ends up going. So the, the, the thing is um, with us people who are in business, the construction business to be specific. We handle quite a lot of money, I would say, uh, because people work their lives off to build a house. People get loans to put into construction. So the people in the construction area handle a lot of money. And they, my observation of a lot of Zambian engineers, repairs, is uh, we haven't they, they, there are a lot of guys that have really worked on improving their skills, but they haven't worked on improving their management level. They haven't worked on uh, scaling their businesses. So you find that if a client comes and they give you money that you've never seen in your life, if you don't have proper management, that easily lowers you. So that's the thing in the Zambian uh, construction area. A lot of clients will tell me, I paid the guy, he persuaded me to give him the contract, I gave him the contract, then afterwards they stopped picking up my, 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 my phone calls. Afterwards, it happens like I'm the one who's in need of them to deliver the service, but while I was trying to, to help them out. So when I look at that, I feel, I feel like it's my responsibility as a person who's in this field to help out a lot of uh, youths to learn how to manage the business manage the production, manage the inflow of cash, and grow their capacity, but still deliver as expected to the clients. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that as you were about to start the business, uh, found a place, and all of a sudden, council people pounced on you because you had not uh, gotten the proper papers and whatnot. So what is your opinion? Um, 
of how things should be pertaining to young entrepreneurs and getting registered? Um, okay. I feel like the, the system that has been put in place for, for us SMEs and the, the paperwork is, uh, is a bit tedious and involving for the level at which we operate. Because yeah. around that time, we were, we were only starting. I, uh, uh, <coughs> sorry, but if, if there was a proper way that the system would come and uh, evaluate our businesses, they, they, they look at what we're trying to do, then they see the ideas that we're trying to bring to the plate. And then they help us to say, okay, you guys have the skills, you don't have the money. How, how can we come in? I don't know if there's, uh, there's a branch or a wing of the government that does that, but we never got that opportunity. Because just starting, we had to face uh, uh, council being difficulty on us. Then later on, uh, some people started advising me to say, you need to, to do the ZRA, this and this and this, which makes it hard for people like me at that point who are just starting, who know nothing about it, who have, the, who have nothing but a dream, nothing but their, their skill to do the business. It makes it really hard. So if there was a way that uh, the council itself or the government itself would uh, look at us SMEs and try to to nurture us, them not being the enemy to us, but trying to nurture us, bring us to do the the right things and how we need to do it in the correct way. Like me myself, I'm a college dropout. I have a little knowledge about how paperwork is done, but there are some people out there who are really skilled, who really uh, want to work, but they have no idea about how how to go about the paperwork. People, it means nothing to them. All they have is their skills. How do they operate if council comes with a lock and says, okay, if you don't have this, we lock you. Some people don't even understand what a trader's license is. Some people don't understand what ZRA, CPP, uh, a fire certificate is. So if there was a wing that would come and educate us about that, on a ground level, actually, not even on a professional level, because we are hands-on people. Hands-on people, a lot of people that I, I deal with, uh, let me say, the, my team, in my team, uh, some of them are not even the 12, uh, they are they're just two dropouts, yes, some of them yes have a, a little bit of understanding, but I've taken it upon myself to, to try to impart some certain knowledge of what I know to them, but if those people were just to run on their own, and the government was to come in as strong as council was coming on us. I feel like it's a little bit unfair of how business is done and how we're expected to follow the system that we don't so even understand. So what is your ideal situation? My ideal situation is um, we, need a gov we need government institutions to help the hands-on people uh, understand what procedures need to be taken for them to be considered a standard level of business. That's my idea. Not us just coming in and understanding everything at once. That's quite hard, I would say. All right, thank you. So how have you maintained your relevance in this business? How do you fight competition? Because I understand there should be competition. Yeah, competition is pretty uh, is, is is pretty much, and uh, for me, my competitors are foreign guys. <laughs> I would say foreign guys uh, because um, the the local the, the local guys are doing pretty good, but the foreign guys have confidence, have customer confidence in them, saying they're going to deliver the service. So how we are managed to maintain relevance for, for this while is um, I believe the most powerful marketing team you can ever have is a satisfied client because I can I can advise I can advertise and still when a customer comes here I will need to prove to them to say I can do the job I'm the man for the job. 
but if it was a recommendation, that client has already had a chat with uh, a, satisfied, a former satisfied client. That means they already have confidence when they come to us. So for us, our core value is we are not the best, I would say, but we are there to work with the client, uh, bring his ideas and our ideas, we work on them. Where we make a mistake, we won't switch off our phone. <laughs> we will come back, we'll do a review, and we will see to it that the client gets what they had in mind or as they desire. That has helped us keep uh, relevance. Talking about making mistakes, have you disappointed a client? <laughs> um, I would say yes. We, we have disappointed a client before, and uh, we always know a way that we work around it. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm managing a team of 17 guys, <laughs> so it's uh, and construction is not like uh, a, 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 a once off business, you know. Every client that comes, their project won't be done in a day, it's an experience of two weeks. You have to to, to, to rehearse back and forth with the client for quite some time. So every client that comes, when you have five, five clients at once, that means you are liaising with five clients and coordinating the team to deliver those services to those guys. So mistakes, uh, definitely mistakes happen. Okay. But what differentiates us from these other guys is uh, when we make a mistake, we do make follow-ups and we live to rectify that mistake. Yes. Uh, Linda Hamilton there says, he has so much determination. He is such an inspiration. Uh, Piri Chigaga Dominic says, keep pushing my brother. Thank you. Uh, Melanie Nkawa says, I like your determination, Mr. Zulu. Keep the fire burning. Thank you. Okay, so what is your plea to today's youth? Okay. <clears throat> um, what I would like to see in the today's youth is um, getting our mind to the ground and understand the system better. Not waiting for the government to come in and uh, do miracles to save us, because it's a lot of money that's going out of the country uh, by foreigners. Uh, foreigners are doing pretty good. I have nothing against them. We learn from them. But if the Zambian youths can also learn that uh, we need to, we need more hands-on people. We need more. There was a time one 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 of the clients who really inspired me, told me a story of how America was built. Then I researched on how America was built, and he mentioned to say, you know, America wasn't built on white collar jobs. No, America was built on what? Mechanics. America was built on construction, it was built on steel, it was built. and I started researching about all those things, then I realized we do have these things, but why is it that every time the government has to give a tender to a Zambian, they have to bring in first a Chinese engineer, a Lebanese engineer, to come and manage a Zambia to do the job that they would have done themselves if they, were, they would just get organized. So my plea to the youth is, let's Pay attention to, to, to these hands-on skills because we need more constructors locally owned. We need uh, we need to trap that money so that uh, it doesn't go out of the country. And I also have another plea to uh, my fellow friends who are in business. Um, I interact with a lot of foreign people because I like their model of business. There was a time that we went to. Uh, my friend was managing a certain project where he was selling some, some papers and getting some blocks. So we went to a paper factory and we had budgeted that we would be getting a square meter of papers at 65. Then we found an increase of uh, uh, a 10 quarter increase of 75. Then we tried to negotiate, we tried to fight for a discount, and the, the guys were bold enough to say, No, we can give you below the. the this, this price because we have you can go anywhere right now any paper factory you will find that this is the standard price we have a community that we we, we, we sit down together with to control the prices of how things are done then 
I researched further, I discovered that these guys actually have an entrepreneurial ecosystem where they can just sit down as guys who are, who are in a certain field and set a markup or set a standard to say we will all live by this standard. Then when I looked at that trade comparing it with our way of doing things, I realized Zambians, we are, low, we are too much in competition with each other. When in the actual sense, we should get together and dictate the market. It's it's not really monopoly, but it's uh, staying in business as well. We need to work with each other. We need we need to have contacts of each other so that we can just uh, find a way that we can control the market. The foreign guys are doing it. The, 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 the Zambian guys are yet to start doing it. Slowly, I believe we can do it. But if we reach a point where we just have an entrepreneurial ecosystem and we can control the market of how things uh, are being priced out there, I feel that would be the day that we'll really break free in the business world. Okay, very good. Uh, Judith Nanga says, this one is one in a zillion. Encouraging indeed. Okay, so as it gets to the end of the show, you've got five minutes to sell out yourself. <laughs> Okay, so um, first I saw I saw the company first. <laughs> okay, so if you are if you are building, you can you can contact us on zero nine seven nine eight three zero three three four class sixty fabrication. You can search for us on Facebook, yeah, and you can visit us in uh, Livala South along Lilai uh, Road, just near Waterworks. Uh, what we deal in is anything that has to do with steel. We make tungstens, we make window frames, good ones for that matter. We we fabricate, we do steel trusses, and and so forth. Then the other thing is uh, you can you can contact us. I mean, contact of if you need any construction services, we are we have a network of very good. Uh, for constructors and uh, anything that you would need, plumbers, electricians, we have those because we've been entrusted by a lot of clients to help them manage their sites or manage manpower on on, 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 on on their project. So you can get in touch with us. We'll be there for you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. This has been the Zulu on Smart Youth Entrepreneur segment.